I will pet my cat once for every subscriber this video gets. Welcome back to the epic devlogs of more custom night. We are on episode 3, and if you are new here and have not seen the previous two episodes, go watch them. There should be a little card with a playlist of them in the corner, so there you go. Today we are making the AI interpreter, which is a huge part of this game. This episode is a lot shorter, but more technical than the others. If you want to create your own animatronics, then pay attention to this one. The character we are going to be using for testing is going to be Bonnie, since he's going to be in an upcoming video anyway, and his mechanic is more straightforward than the others. Just like last episode, ScrubDub hasn't really done much besides making this render of the hallway, which is too dark to use. So for now, until he makes something, we're just going to use placeholders. So for now, we're going to use this placeholder image of Bonnie until ScrubDub makes his renders. And let's code him in. By the end of the video, we'll have something that looks kind of like this. This is Bonnie's script file, and though it looks pretty complex, don't worry, it's actually really simple, and I'll explain how it works. The custom scripts use an event-based system to do all of the stuff you'll see later in the video. All of the different events have their own unique tag, and some of them even have their own arguments which contain data you can use. As of recording, I've added 16 total event tags, though so I'll add more in the future. Though now, I'm going to explain what each one does. Listed in alphabetical order, we start with audio lore, which is called whenever the player places an audio lore. The data returned is the name of the camera they place it on as a string. The event simply called boop occurs whenever the player clicks on the Freddy plushie's nose. No data is returned. The cam change event occurs whenever the player either opens the monitor or changes the camera. The name of the camera the player is currently viewing is returned as a string. The key press event occurs whenever the player presses a key on their keyboard. The data returned is the key they press as a Pi game variable. The mouse click event occurs whenever the player clicks their mouse. The data returned is a tuple, basically a list, with three values, all being true or false. The first value is whether or not the left mouse button is clicked, second being the middle scroll wheel, and third being the right mouse button. The shock event occurs when the player uses the shock option on a camera. The data returned is the name of the camera as a string. The create event is called whenever the player starts the night and is never called again. This is when you should load your images. The on frame command is called every frame. How often it's called is based off of the player's frame rate settings. Unlike the on millisecond event, which is called every millisecond regardless of frame rate setting, the sound played, sound stopped, and sound paused events are kind of self explanatory. The data returned is the name of the sound. The fan toggle, flashlight toggle, mask toggle, monitor toggle, and wet floor sign toggle are called when you interact with their respective objects. Now that we're done with that, I can actually begin explaining how Bonnie himself works. This beginning part has all the setup stuff, as well as some visibility logic, but just ignore those. This contains some of the stuff like the starting location and interval timer. The movement path is a dictionary with a bunch of lists, which is basically a map of where Bonnie can move around the pizzeria and where from. Here's the logic for Bonnie's interval timer. Being accurate to FNAF 1, Bonnie has a movement opportunity every 4.9 seconds. If you don't know what a movement opportunity is, it's the system that every animatronic uses in most FNAF games. The game makes a copy of the list that Bonnie uses to determine where he can move from the current location he is in. The game then checks where the audio lore is placed. If it's placed in Bonnie's path, then he is more likely to go to that room. The audio lore won't entirely determine where he goes, just slightly influence. Bonnie then rolls a dice from 1 to 20. If the number he gets is lower or equal to his AI number, then he moves. If not, he stays. Once Bonnie is finally at the office, he will wait there until another interval. After this interval, the player will get jump scared if they raise the camera. I don't have a death screen in the game currently, but this is where the trigger would go. If the player closes the left door while he's in the office, he will go away. The rest isn't that important. Now that it's over, I can actually show you what Bonnie looks like in game.
Now of course none of that was final, but it's good that we have a general outline. Soon all of the documentation will be available on GitHub, which will all be public when I release the demo. And that concludes episode 3 of the epic devlogs of more custom night. If you liked the video, please like, subscribe, and share because it really helps. If you have any suggestions for any animatronic mechanics, put them down in the comment section below. If your mechanic gets in, we will give you a shout out. And I'll also let you guys decide what mechanic Endo-01 should have, because honestly, we don't know. I post frequent updates on not only this, but also Supernova and Dip's Cool Whip in our community Discord server, so make sure to join. And hopefully, I will see you in under 4 months. Happy New Year.